What's going on, movie lovers? You recording? We are, yeah. Oh! What's going on, movie lovers? <laughs> um, <laughs> we are talking about Red Dawn. We are the back. Original. 1984 Red Dawn. The good version, although yeah, the, I have not seen one. I have not seen the remake, so I am not willing to shit all over it just Ooh. yet. Chris Hemsworth. It's I like me some Chris Hemsworth, it's though. It's terrible. I'm gonna. I'm gonna it's watch not. It. It's not just that it shits on the original. It's just a bad movie. Mm. It's. It, yeah, it's got both those factors working against it. So that's not good. I still want to watch it because I'm pretty sure I seen it for like five bucks on Blu-ray. Oh, I'm sure. And for five dollars, I'll watch. I'll buy any movie. Yeah. Give it a shot. Find I, out. See it. So you're two it. hours. I don't care. <laughs> I mean, you, you can you can be playing DC Universe or something. I I'm hours. downloading it. I hope it's it should be done downloading on my PS4 at home. There you go. I, I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, so no, we're going to talk about the good Red Dawn, the 84 Patrick Swayze. C. Thomas version. Howell and Great Leah cast. Thompson and uh, Charlie Harry, Sheen. Harry Dean Stanton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great cast. Powers Booth. Jennifer Grey. Yeah. Holy shit. All those people. Uh, you didn't even mention Charlie Sheen? Yeah. Did you mention Charlie yeah. Sheen? Yeah, I thought I did. You did know, I? I don't think you checked the tape. Someone checked the tape. I don't think you mentioned Charlie Sheen. Oh, I'll check it. Don't you fucking worry. <laughs> um, that was so, one of my first notes I wrote down was great cast. Yeah, it's yeah. incredible. Yeah. It's it's absolutely stacked. It's uh, it's weird. I didn't realize Outsiders was one year before this. And oh, cool. There's a lot of... <clears throat> there's a... Excuse me. There's a lot of carryover from that. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the right carryover... I don't, I don't want Tom Cruise and or even people in this film. Um, I think they chose the right people to bring over. Mm -hmm. Patrick Swayze, Charlie Sheen as brothers is incredible. Believe um, more believable than what I... Yeah, when right? They, at the very beginning of the film, when they're like, oh, they're brothers, I'm like, I don't know if I see that. By the end of it, it's believable. Oh, for if sure. Buy it yeah. It. yeah, definitely. Um, so what was your... Uh, your first experience and first time seeing was this your first time yes oh yes. my god yesterday was my first time going through and watching this movie i've mm. wanted to catch up and 2018 is i want to catch up on a lot of films i've missed yeah over top of the years and red dawn was one i had always heard about never watched it so i finally did i was glad i seen it on your list of yeah. movies that you wanted to well it was, about. it was before our time too so yeah yeah um i don't know it's uh Sorry, I interrupted you. Oh no, you're fine. Uh, I was just gonna say I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah, uh, I, I'm uh, not. Good. I'm not a Patrick Swayze fan. Yeah, you uh, don't have to lower your voice. It's okay. Well, he you can't know, hear you anyway. Something, maybe he's a ghost. He's fucking behind us right now. For all I know, on that shit that you put behind me, he could be like <laughs> right there. Right I'm gonna make sure I edit him. Like <laughs> you put, staring put right him at like you. Right there, from yeah. Holding a gun at you or something. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> why not? Uh, I am not the biggest Patrick Swayze fan. I don't know. I just he's in a bunch of shit that like my mom likes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was good in Donnie Darko, and he's good in Red Dawn. Roadhouse. I've never seen Roadhouse. Oh my god. So I don't know. Maybe he's good in Roadhouse. I haven't seen it. Yeah. What you, what, you don't like Dirty Dancing? I don't oh, shut the fuck up. I don't know. I don't like Dirty Dancing. Oh man. Like shit that my mom watches. Okay, well, I guess I'm like your mom. Yeah. Fucking Dirty Does Dancing. Does your mom watch Dirty Dancing? Oh, yeah. Is she sure. going to be listening? Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. Sure. We she, talked yeah. about her last week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she uh, she had to make some corrections. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The dirty Dancing, all that kind of feminine, feminist yeah. stuff. But I don't know. I enjoy Dirty Dancing. I, same way I enjoy Footloose and... Grease. And, I just. Yeah. I, oh my god, I love Grease. Oh, fuck you. I just don't give a shit about I the, love those all kinds of those. I just don't care. I love them all. That's not my shit. So, uh, what do you think of Red Dawn? What did you see at first? What's yeah, I, I, uh, I first saw it. Uh, this is another one I watched with my dad. I was probably. If I had to guess, I was probably in fourth, fifth grade, first time I saw it. Um, didn't really think anything of it. I'm pretty sure I fell asleep. Um, yeah. And then um, I remember, again, like, once I started getting all my own DVDs and doing stuff like that. Um, I, I, I bought it again, I sat down and watched it, and I started to appreciate it a little more. And then now it's just the older I get and the more I see it, the more it kind of is like, holy shit, like this is a really 
magical film, like from before our time. And um, I just, it kind of makes you wish that you had been there to like experience it as it was coming out. Yeah. Because I know, like, especially to, like, probably our dad's generation, like, this is a big movie. This probably means a lot to them. And, um, I know I meant, like, a lot to my parents. And, uh, yeah, it's just, um... This would have been a good one if you could have got Mike on to talk about Red Yeah! Dead. Because this is one of those movies he, where, you're, where you're right, where he's a little bit older than you and I. And yeah. It's like, you will not shut the fuck up about how much he likes Red Dawn. Yeah. It's a good movie, that's why we're talking about right, it. But you're exactly. right, too. Do people of that that era, that generation, people who grew up with... And, yeah. Go, you know, like, and Co especially Cold, Cold War, War and, and the Russians and that whole stuff. It's like, I can really see how that would play into this being an important film. Yeah, for sure. Uh, strangely, it's kind of come back into the news. It makes it strangely relevant. Yeah, it does. Again, I didn't even think about that. In a weird what I did right at the beginning, how the beginning of the film opens up yeah. with the school and the school right. coming under fire and everything. Oh, yeah. That, and then with the, that turns into Russia and World War Three. I'm like, oh, well, this is very... Very topical. <laughs> very topical. Even I was like, I understand why they rebooted but even if the reboot's not good yeah I it's not with russians either it's not it's with uh i think koreans really yeah see I, i'm li i'm just liking the reboot it's more and more making me sick just thinking about it and you know in this they're out in the woods they're having the hunt survive oh that was you know, the best part of the film it was an american it's raw this is a cowboy film this is like a 80s american cowboy film with Whoa. them it's got all the elements of uh, of a western. In the remake, uh, they get a cabin. <laughs> like, <laughs> how how fucking tough is that? I mean, I think it gets like blown up, uh, pretty early. But I mean, still, they go to a cabin right away. It's like, really, you're gonna go to your summer home? Like, I don't. No, no. Because I you're starting to not watch it. Watch yeah, it. Huh? I'm sort of gonna watch it. Um, uh, I will let you know what I think. But okay. I really liked them like roughing it in the woods. Right. Like they were. They had to rely on. This is what our fathers have taught us. You know, mm -hmm. we've grown up hunting in this area, and we just have to rely on what we can find yeah. for food and what we can scavenge for food and shit. And yeah, just, for sure. Uh, how how do they get by on their own? I, I really like that. And I like the fact that you don't really see too much of their shelter. Right. Like you see, like, the fire a lot. You see them, like, sitting around it trying to stay warm. But you don't really see if they've, like, made, like, on Survivor or something. Like, yeah. Like, the little... You don't really need to see that. Yeah. It was cool the way... I like the way the film is broke up into, like, November, December... January, I, and yeah. you get like sna you get like snapshots of what's going on, and not so much of having to focus on them building a shelter and like right. the day to day. But it's like, hey, here's an important event that happened in November, and here's an important event that happened to them in December, and you can see how they're starting to get better at what they're doing and how right. they're growing. And I, I wrote I think that, that down. That that's really interesting to me because i don't know of another film maybe the shining that kind of takes that yeah, okay, yeah that, exactly. a, that approach to storytelling so like that's i wrote that down because i feel like this and that's another good example is the shining is like when they're doing month to month to month they're like they're continuing a story and it's all it all makes sense they're showing what they need to show you now there's a lot of films a lot of stuff that just will say like february 27th uh, Washington D.C. 0715 mm. and it's like, like why is that important? It's and it won't pertain to. It's just they wanted to add a time. They wanted to. Add, it, it has nothing to do. Yeah. With it. It's like you're, and then you think that you have to pay attention to it. But it really doesn't. It, have and shit it doesn't to do really with, matter. With shit. But like when you're watching Red Dawn, it's like, oh shit, they're coming up in November and it's snowing and it's cold. How are they going to stay warm? How are they going to? You do can all this make shit? all these connections. And um, yeah, that's great. The Shining does that too. But I can't. I can't think of an example off the top of my head. But they, I mean, Twenty Four does that. It, it, but I mean, like, and film. Yeah, but it makes sense in Twenty Four. Well, yeah, do it. especially uh, with. Like, I, I know what you're talking about for movies. I. Do Transformers do that shit? I can't. And like the I Michael Bay Transformers movie, I know they do a lot of like jumping between. 
I can't think or of any like, example. Or like Fast and the Furious. Okay, kind of like that, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, they're jumping around between countries and stuff, but... I don't, I don't know how... I, I, I know what you yeah, mean okay. on, on um, that one. I just... I thought that this was like the way to do it. Right. I don't believe, and this comes from... You know, doing a little bit of writing and stuff, too, on the side. I don't think you need to shove every detail at the audience all right. of the time. You can just say December, and that gives you a snapshot, especially, you know, living here in the Midwest or yeah. whatever. We know what December is like. We know the conditions. We know what to expect. It's a fucking movie. Visually, you can see the scenery. You can see the snow. You can see the cold. It sets up all of that backstory by just saying December on right. the screen. It does all of that without having to sit you the fuck down and explain everything that's going or, on. Or, like, okay, another thing that I hate is, like, 32 weeks later. Yeah. What do you mean? So, it's been a couple months. Why don't you just say it's now December? Why don't? Why do you have to do 32 months? Don't make me do or, a little math. Or a little do, I just, yeah. That, I, I, I think that's annoying, too. Like, just say... It went from October to November. It went from November to December. Like, it's... Sometimes less is more. Less is and, almost always more. And in this case, it's perfect the way it is. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite scene? Oh, um, I didn't actually write down a specific favorite scene. Uh, Ooh. I would say... I really liked... Uh, what was the girl that had the blue coat? Uh, there's the scene where the army tank, the Russian tank, pulls up to the gas. the gas station. And so she comes up on a bike, and they're, they're like, starting to harass her. Yeah. And so she gives them the... Uh, the basket. The basket. And then the basket's got the bomb it pulls the tank yeah. up. Yeah. And so they're chasing after her. You don't know what the fuck is going to happen. And then they pop out of the ground. Oh, that's your first time, too. Yeah, oh, I had God. no idea. And yeah. so they pop out of the ground, and they fucking shoot him. I'm like, holy shit. Like, I didn't expect any of what just happened to happen. That was good stuff. Yeah, that's crazy, because like, now, after I seeing it so many times, it's like, I look, I'm like, oh, shit, where the... Because those things are fucking hidden good. Yeah. And even knowing the Camouflage where they, in this film is very real. Even knowing where they pop out at, I'm still like, I can kind of tell. Like, I knew where Jed popped out at, but it's just, it's really well hidden. I had no idea. Was, I, oh, that's I, so cool. I went into Red Dawn on basically a blank canvas. Oh, of, other than, like, I know Patrick Swayze, and I knew a little bit from hearing people talk about it, but yeah. I, I had no clue that, like, that scene just blew me away. It gives me shivers. That was fucking cool. That's awesome. All of the traps they set in mm -hmm. the movie are so cool, and it's so guerrilla warfare, and mm -hmm. very... If this was a real situation, what would... How would we fight back like this? It's a lot this like... This how uh, we would do it. It's a mix between, like, setting traps with Rambo and ambushing with Mel Gibson from The Patriot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, and this is off topic, but The Patriot, when uh, when they're ambushing one of the, the British uh, walk, uh, whatever it's called, wagons, um, and they have all the guns set up against the trees, and he's just running back and forth between trees, picking up guns and shooting them. Yeah. That, I don't know, that just... That's the Seeing them of... hide behind trees and stuff, and like, jump out of bushes and shit, and it's like... Fucking awesome. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, so, my favorite scene is... We we kind of talked about it, I asked you. Um, mm. The, uh... What do they call it? The, I mean, it's an internment camp. Uh, Re-education camp, or whatever they call it, where they keep all the... The drive-in... The, the drive-in drive theater with the, the, the fences around it. Right. And all the guards, and yeah. Um, when, uh... I can't think of Charlie Sheen's name. Jed and Matt. When Jed and Matt are going looking for their dad and stuff, and and uh, he comes up to the fence and he gives him that speech, like you, you, Harry Dean I was, Stanton. I was hard on you. Yeah. You know, do you understand now why I was and all this stuff and and you know, just don't cry. You know, just live. You know, get out there and survive. Get the hell out of here. You know, just don't cry about it. And then that's a really strong and and. They're, uh, it, it, it that, makes me teary-eyed. That's a powerful moment. Yeah, and, it, uh, it definitely makes me teary-eyed. That was the only time, I think, Harry Dean Stanton was in the film. 
Yeah, for yeah. That scene. Right. I don't know if you see him before. You kind of see him like uh, in one of like the line shootings. Okay. Afterwards, uh, when he dies. Sure, but, but he's in the film very briefly, right, and this is right, his right. moment to chew the scenery. He and, fucking does. And it. him standing next to that fence, talking to his kids. You're right. The line that he says about how now do you understand why I was tough yeah. on you? Uh, that is some. That was some. It's uh good, it's, powerful stuff. I, uh, it's like the um, ex uh, Expendables, uh, Mickey Rourke. He wasn't in the mo movie that much, but he had that scene, mm -hmm. a really powerful scene about telling his, his stories of war and stuff. And, and there's this story, Stallone's like, you know, you're, you're only here for a day or two. We got to get this scene done today. You have to crush it. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing that he just... One continuous take fucking crushes. Some actors can turn yeah. it. When, when some actors turn it on, they can turn it on. It's fucking and good. Fucking eat some scenery and, and so, like, do some good shit. I mean, that that's... It, it ends with him yelling, a Yes, that's, that's my favorite and part. And then the very next scene is Stallone hammering shit <laughs> and fucking building an Iron Man costume. Oh, my God. <laughs> It but, is funny that we're doing this right after Rambo because people get shot with a bow and arrow in this movie oh yeah, too. That's true. Although it's like more of a, it's like a yeah, it's like one that you would use in like high school archery right, right. class, as opposed to fucking Stallone <laughs> with the badass compound bow. But right, yeah, th that was an intense moment too, where they Ooh. were coming up the, they were hanging out on the cliff mm. and they were trying to hide from him. Yeah, and then like they accidentally, I forget, she slips or something. Yeah, she like. Falls down comes into view and then they're they're all scrambling for position and they're sh they shoot him with the bow and they're shooting him with the guns and shit. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Yuri, the guy who makes it back to the car, and he's like, "God help me! God help me!" Yeah. And then Swayze just kind of walks up with the gun and he's like, "You're fucked." It's just like that's where it turns. Like these guys are here to kick some fucking ass. This <laughs> movie made me like Patrick Swayze. He's, it's, not yeah. that, it's not that I ever disliked him. I it's, just, not, it's not that you think he's a bad actor. He's a know, great he's actor. Just... He's just in movies that I don't like. Right. And I watch him in Red Dawn. Uh, I think my dad's got Roadhouse. Maybe I should watch Roadhouse. Roadhouse. Too, on TV. <laughs> yeah, you should uh, watch Roadhouse. I'll let sure. you know what I think of that one. Yes. Maybe we'll podcast about it. I don't know. Uh, I would definitely podcast about Roadhouse. Or Roadhouse. Uh, oh but it God. makes me wish that he would have done more shit like this. Or more ma action. More action, or maybe, you know, I think he had, what, cancer? Yeah. Did he die from cancer? Yeah. Maybe you would have seen him later on in, like, an Expendables film oh, yeah, or something that, really that would have been really fucking cool as well, too. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, I was looking, and it was 2009 when he passed. God, that's been a while it's been ago. almost a decade. Yeah. And it just, I don't know, it felt more recent than that. But almost a decade since Patrick Swayze's been gone. Do you have any actors like that that you're like, I like them as an actor, but they're just in movies that I don't like? Anyone stand out? Uh, it's... <laughs> uh, not off the top of my head. Yeah. Um, I'll think about that, though. Yeah, that's a, that's a yeah. fun one. We'll, we'll come back to that Richard, later. Richard Gere. Ooh, me, okay. Is oh, another, my God. It's another yes. one that, like, I like him. He's a good actor. He can yeah. choose some scenery. Does a bunch of shit that I don't want to watch. Um... But like Moth, like Mothman Prophecies, <laughs> okay, is a yeah. good movie that I, I liked it. And Mothman in, uh, Prophecies a lot. Have you seen First Night? Him and Sean Connery. Mm. First Night's pretty good. I like that. And uh, he's in uh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn's Finest, I think. Yeah, like he's I got like that some, one. He's got. But yeah, some, then he's, he's in stuff good... like uh, The Officer and the Gentleman, or is that it? Officer and the Gentleman, I, I don't, something I don't like know. that. And then. Uh, Again, whatever the fuck. <laughs> What's that called? Uh, Julia Roberts. Pretty Woman. Pretty Woman. Pretty Woman. Yeah. Again, it's, that thing. again, it's good shit, but that's shit that like my mom watches. Right. And like, right. I don't know. I'm just not interested. And in what what am I gonna do? Fucking sit down and watch Pretty Woman on Blu-ray by myself? <laughs> by I'm, I'm probably not gonna do that, Jeff. <laughs> that's good. Back to Red Dawn Richard here. Gere. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Back, uh, yeah. Back, maybe back. He, maybe he can be Reed Richards. In Fantastic Four reboot. Well, he's like. Oh, he's like right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's getting pretty close. Um, Red Dawn, though. Um, again, so last week we just talked about uh, Rambo. And I talked about the intro music and like the Rocky. Or Rocky. Yeah. The Rambo theme. 
Um, the intro music to Red Dawn. Did that catch you at all? Did yeah, you... I I didn't write it down, uh, but I liked it because from, it was very 80s. From not watching it, did you recognize it? Because I feel like it's kind of like like a, a yeah, tune like recognize the score. Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't. Not too much. No. I wonder, because I don't know. I I talk about the music with every fucking movie, so yeah. it might just be my thing. But uh, Red Dawn's. I don't know. I, I just, it feels really iconic. Mm -hmm. I feel like, if even if you hadn't seen it, like, you, everybody knows Rocky. Everybody knows Fly High, but, uh, uh, can't talk. Everybody knows Fly High or Eye of the Tiger and all that shit. Like the thing uh, from Jaws or yeah. Indiana Jones, Back I feel, to the Future. I feel like Red Dawn is up there. Maybe not in that top ten, but, I mean, like, right under there. Sure. Same, with, same with Rambo. I feel like it's sure. not quite a material everybody knows, but I feel like it a might be high in, it majority. might be in your top fifty. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Movie scores. I could see that. I I don't know. I I, I liked I think it. It's really I, great. It makes me want to yell Wolverine. I like I the way they took their high school mascot because these are kids, mm -hmm. and these are kids that get put into this situation that's terrible, and they have to grow up just immediately. Yeah. And I like the way that they kind of use the. High school football team Wolverines is kind of their rallying call. Because it's lucky that they got a cool, cool one too. Cool mascot. Yeah, not it's not like, like the Lynx. No, it's Lynx man. Or uh, what's an, what's another? Who's around us? Like Iowa Falls. Well, Iowa Falls cadets. Cadets. Eagle Grove Eagles. Yeah, that's not the same. Yeah, it's not Wolverine. Wolverine. That's way cooler. They should do a remake with Hugh Jackman. <laughs> Wolverine! What? Yeah, we're, it's just Wolverine. Just just Hugh Jackman. It's... Solo film, killing Russians. I would watch that. Same exact film. Yeah. You just, just see no, Hugh, no... Hugh Jackman just runs out of the school. <laughs> <laughs> he's the teacher at the beginning of the film. And, he gets, and then he gets shot and he's just... Get shot and the fucking claws yeah. come out and they're like, holy shit! And then the school is actually Xavier's. <laughs> can we do a fucking movie? Bobby and Kitty can, and everybody. Can, no, can we do ones? a fucking podcast without bringing up comic book characters? No. I don't think this is possible, Jeff. Well, I mean, their fucking name is Wolverines. It yeah. was begging for it. Um, but pretty early on in the movie, uh, I think the parachutes coming down is great imagery and all that, but... That's iconic. That... There's a shot, though. It's a quiet, maybe three, four second shot, and it's just from a neighborhood overlooking a house, not at the school, and you, in the background. Completely quiet, and then you just kind of see parachutes lazily falling. Mm -hmm. that's, that's some great scenery. Great imagery. I legitimately didn't know what was going on at the beginning of the Oh my god, yeah, that's amazing. Because I... And again, this is cool. This is why I like watching movies that I don't know a lot about. Is that I'm like, what? What is? What is? Why is there parachuting? What is? What is going oh, on? Oh man, it, that's amazing. I I didn't know, and I wrote down. And this really stuck with me. I wrote down horrific opening because my lord, I was like, okay, you're at a school and there's these people parachuting <laughs> down, and yeah, you know, who knows what's Maybe gonna we'll... happen? I yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen. And then they, they're opening fire on these kids, and you see some of them. Yeah, there's one hanging out the hanging window. Hanging out the window. Holy and I'm shit. Like, My lord, this is brutal shit. This is like... It was... That is scary to think about. Yeah. It's scary that that happens. And it seemed plausible. Yeah. The way the movie is done. It yeah. was like... I could maybe see this because we live in you know small Midwestern Iowa town. If the fucking Russians parachuted in around here and a whole bunch of them, what are we gonna do to stop them here? Their and, town is almost exactly like ours. Like Webster City, like their downtown yeah. looked like our downtown. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The only difference is, is we don't have any fucking woods to go hide in. We'd be fucked. Yeah. We'd be hiding out in a cornfield for two months and then we'd be <laughs> fucked. We could go to Briggs Woods. That's a joke. It's funny <laughs> to you and I and no one else listening. But... The four trees around town. Yeah. Um, 
I wrote down, I always write down a bunch of quotes, just because I think quotes are fun. I wrote down, um, yeah. You wrote down some? I got one. You got one? Yeah, you, you can go. Um, so, it, this is pretty early on in the movie, but um, it's kind of when Swayze's kind of assuming the role of leader and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, Curly Head, Daryl, is... I'm student body president, and I think we should do this and that. Oh. And Danny, Danny, yeah, I, I, I'm going with him. Sit down, Danny. <laughs> I just love how Patrick Swayze is like, I know it's good for you. Just sit down and shut up. See, that scene I thought was really cool because that showed that they're kids and they don't understand the gravity of the situation. Yeah, they that they, they no were, that have no idea what's going on. And so they're just going to what we know right. and what they know at that time is like high school shit yeah and i thought that it was cool that patrick swayze was like sit the fuck down yeah like, like, this is like you're being the what was he the president of the high school yeah, class like the, or the like student body, student president, body president, or whatever. president that is not at all helpful in this current situation <laughs> i was a little confused with one thing was patrick swayze supposed to be still in high school or had he graduated that has always kind of, I've always kind of wondered the same thing. I always feel like maybe he was like one year, two years graduated. Because he seems... I feel like he was maybe 19, 20. Like, he's still a kid. Yeah. Uh, I feel like he had just started kind of, just started working. He was helping take care of Matt and taking care of the kids and stuff, dropping them off at school, so... That's kind of what I thought, too. He seemed like he was a little bit older. Yeah. Like, the, the other younger kids were still in school and... Right. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. I too. always imagined like Matt and some of those other guys, like maybe sophomore juniors, kind of yeah. in the middle, and then um, maybe like Daryl might have been a senior because he was student body president. And then I'm just making this stuff up. I have no idea. Doing fan fiction. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Red Dawn fan I, fiction. And then I imagined um, Patrick Swayze was like 1920, like yeah. just graduated. And, yeah. And all that kind of stuff. That was kind of that was kind of what I thought too with that. I'm glad we we're on the same page. Um, but when they're doing that and they're kind of like trying to figure out what to do, he's kind of assuming the role of the leader, and um, they're, they're like you said, they're kids. They're freaking out. They don't know what to do, and they want to go back to town. and And he says, um, uh, "They're like, what about our families? What about?" And they just, he says, "Your family." would want you to be alive. Your family mm -hmm. wants you to stay alive. Mm -hmm. And like, I just feel like that kind of, everybody understands that. Yeah. It's like if, if my kids were out hiding and I was stuck in the, the prison camp, don't fucking come back. Like, go hide, stay safe. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm already fucked, but. Totally. You, you can be fine. I'm totally. I don't know. I just, I think that was kind of uh, a lot. Like, I just think this is, I just think, like, this is a, a, a really well-written movie. Mm -hmm. Like, the script is solid, and it captures a lot of human feelings and instincts and emotion. emotion. And, I mean, it's an action film, but it's a very emotional... It's funny that we just did Rambo, because Rambo was kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of character, a lot of substance, a lot of, a lot of emotion. And Red Dawn is kind of... I don't know but maybe, like, one of the kind of inventors of, of this kind of film, maybe. It, w it was the first one to have a PG-13 rating. Really? Which I wrote down. I didn't know that. It's a fun piece of trivia. It was, yeah. We'll, we'll, I'll come back to that. <laughs> trivia, because I always ruin trivia. <laughs> We're always doing the best trivia in the, um, the show. But, yeah, I, I just, I feel like, um, it, it's, it's, it's hard to make this kind of movie. Because they don't make movies like this. Anymore. Right. They it's, really it's don't. Tough. I noticed that too, where there was a really big focus on. And this also kind of, I think, maybe how the times have changed. Uh, but there was a really big focus on, like, ground troops and tanks and helicopters yeah. and jets and stuff. And now everything is. Computers and drones. Drones and, and shit. Yeah. And so, of course, it's a different time. But No this cell is, phones. Yeah, this is like imagery from a, a, another era, an era that's gone a little bit. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It's that's, scarier. That's what I mean. Though, it makes like... it scarier, too, because there's the idea that I had wrote down how I love the uh, information 
was hard to come by. Yeah. And so they would go months without knowing what was going on in towns in other states. And so you could just tell that they were... Anytime they would get a shred of info about what was going on, it was like around the campfire and everyone was super intent and listening. And yeah, they were hard pressed for a radio. Because they don't, yeah, because they don't, they don't know what's going on. And I really liked the way that they, uh, they gave you hints as to what was going on in yeah. other parts of the country. Yeah, that was because cool. Because part of what has pissed me off about Walking Dead, yes. I can rant about Walking Dead, is. There's no one that has any fucking idea of what's going on two states away. Yeah. No one has any fucking clue. <laughs> anything, Come on. Anything outside Georgia is just For fuck's dead sakes, zone. really? Bullshit. Yeah. Bullshit. There's shit going on out the there. Close, the closest that they got was the first season at the at the facility. Yeah, the, the, uh, you mean the good season, the best season <laughs> of Walking Dead in the season one when there was um, shit that was going on elsewhere? With uh, no, uh, Noah Emmerich. I can't remember the... The CDC? C yes, yeah. thank you, yep. CDC. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I like that. That was cool. I like the whole... Well, yeah, I mean... The whole setup for it. You take away our phones now for an hour and we freak out. What's going on? I haven't been on Facebook. What's no, happening? No, no, I haven't Googled anything. What's on the news? It's it's amazing that... That's what I mean, though. Like, I wish I could have experienced this as it came out. Because, I mean... We're... Kind of stuck in a weird middle phase because yeah. i mean we're not like i guess we are classified as millennials but we're, we're, we're not on quite the, that young enough but we're not quite old enough i'm on the be, older end of it and you're yeah. just a little younger than um, i am yeah. but we're still on the cusp cusp of, of it where i don't really identify with yeah the and, i have a hard time with that because i'm i'm assuming you're the same way. I remember a time before cell phones. Right. I didn't yes. have a cell phone when I grew up. I yeah. didn't have a cell phone until I was in, God, sophomore year of high school. I got my first cell phone. I think I was in eighth grade, seventh grade. Yeah. Just a little bit younger. Yeah. And so I remember all of this. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. not to this extent. You but remember watching the news on TV? Yeah. How weird. Yeah. Now you just get on your phone and Google pops up saying what's going on. I can pull up Twitter and I can see an instant yeah. live feed of whatever is going on. In if the you world. had a snow day, you'd have to sit in front of the TV for 30 minutes. The radio, minutes. remember that? Remember yeah. getting up and <laughs> praying? You know, it would be snowing outside. Or you just missed it, so you got to wait 20 minutes until it does it again. Yeah. Fuck, I better get ready anyway, just in case. Like we were talking about on Rambo. Uh,. Old enough to remember going to Blockbuster and wanting to watch a movie and it being rented out and just well I just can't watch this now. Right. That's yeah, not a, that's so, not a thing that. So it, uh, what I was trying to get at is it's weird because in ways I identify a lot to this film that was made in 1984. Yeah. I wasn't born until 93. So I mean it's what eight years, um, but it just it's weird saying that I identify with the film in 84. Well, at the same time, I identify with a film made in 2007 or something. Yeah. But it's like, I I remember times like this. I wasn't around for this. But, yeah, I I just, it's it's a weird thing. What state were they in? Colorado. Colorado. So, you know. Just it's... like the church from Rambo. <laughs> oh, connected universe. <laughs> I hate that shit. <laughs> Fuck all of that. I'm so tired of connected universe shit in film. I. Uh, so this is, I mean, it's different Midwest than what we have here in, in Iowa, but it's still, it's, it's, relatable. this is more relatable for us than what it might be for people who live in New York, bigger city, Chicago, Chicago. whatnot, because this town is very relatable and the area that they were in is very relatable. And the, the whole, you see people who have ranches and they have people know how to ride horses and do all that stuff. Right. It's like that's very that makes maybe more sense to you and I than what it does in other parts of the country as well too. And, and it's weird because I was born in Seattle and I lived there for a while. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. I, I always wonder, forget. Like I always kind of wonder like what it would be like if I never moved. How old were you when you moved? <laughs> 12, 13, okay. maybe so a little younger. You had a while, too. Yeah, I mean, I went to elementary and 
beginning of middle school, maybe. Um, but I mean, I I remember living in a in a bigger town. You know, yeah. we can't just walk to the store. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't two blocks away, but yeah. Um, I always kind of wonder like what it would have been like if I still lived in a big city. Like maybe would I wouldn't care? have related would to, you relate to that it? much. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's, not. It's a little different. Maybe not. I don't know. It's it's just I I'm really glad we're talking about this movie because for I don't know. It's just it's it's weird that we can relate to it so much and at the same time be part of a different generation. Yeah. Um and that's what this film does well though. It, like we said it, it mm -hmm. it's it's very emotional. It, it builds around people and interactions mm -hmm. while at the same time being a very gritty gory action film realistic take yeah on it. it it was a lot more action than i remember too i was surprised i was thinking the same thing i was like you know for the amount of like tanks and helicopters and other shit that's flying around and shit being blown up mm -hmm. it couldn't have been cheap right like i'm like this can't be cheap how much does it cost to fucking fly the helicopters over this mountain just for like gasoline and that, pilots and that three of them three of them and other jets and shit that were going overhead and like this isn't cg they didn't cg that jet and that's an actual no, that's pilot a real, yeah. that's a real pilot in that jet all flying the over. there there is again skipping ahead there is no cg whatsoever every explosion is an explosion every fire you see is a fire what you see oh my God. is what you Remember see. Remember early on in the movie where Patrick Swayze is like fighting with that kid? Oh yeah, and they go and right over they the go, campfire. They go right over the campfire, not once yes. but twice. And then the second time when the kid falls to the ground, his fucking pant legs on fire. Yes. You could never do that in a new movie. That's amazing. That, I'm glad you noticed yes, that. Yes, that is cool gorilla. I mean, they're like, stips, like they're right over the fucking fire. They're yeah. stepping right over it like yeah. it's not even there. That is like cool gorilla indie. I know it's Patrick Swayze in a big cast, but that's like indie filmmaking at its best. Yeah. Yes, it's and very this is, real. This is not a studio it's very real. setting that they were in when they were doing that. That was neat. I That stuck out to me. That's crazy. I'm glad you noticed yeah, that, too. I, I, like thought, that. I thought it was crazy. I don't know why I thought that was a big deal, but I'm glad it is. No, that that's neat. Um, before, I mean, they're I, lining I, up. I like actors act, man. Yes, exactly. Um, oh, no, I'll wait till trivia. Um, uh, the uh, When they're lining people up to... to I mean, it's a massacre every time. We're gonna shoot him. Yeah, um, I just—it's a ballsy fucking move, and it's kind of a America thing. But they start yeah. singing the national anthem mm -hmm. and stuff as they're about to get shot. I don't know. It's just something about that. It's like, yeah, fuck you, and <laughs> you see an old guy spit at him and stuff, and it's like, it's just knowing that you're gonna go out, but just having balls and yeah. Now, I mean, get talking about the our kind of generation. Everybody would be like booger bubbles, and if that was you're the hurting one, my feelings, they and, would be trying to record it oh on like a, like a selfie, like Instagram. Uh, hashtag about to be shot. <laughs> fucking stupid. The hashtag concentration camp. God, God, that pisses fucking me off. Instagram it. Um, but yeah, I. I that happens... I think they do two line shootings or something? They do two, they sing at one, and then the third one is when Wolverines intervene. Did you see that coming? They, it's after they dig... Uh, they, they make them dig the so graves. they're digging the graves. And then they're getting ready to shoot... Or no, they do shoot those people. It's the people on the, on the ridge. They line people up on this ridge. Okay. And the old guy spits... Yeah, and then they're they're gonna shoot them, and then the Wolverines come in and mm -hmm. shoot the other guys. I don't know. It's just seeing, okay, like the Patriot with Mel Gibson when you see him running back and forth between shoot, trees shooting people. You're like, mm -hmm. yeah, that makes sense. When you see Jennifer Grey holding a gun shooting a a guy, it's like, what? Mm -hmm. It's it's just it's different seeing young people, you know, take a stand and yeah. It's it's a cool concept. It's a cool movie. Everything about it. I like the, uh... <clears throat> and there's a scene later on in the film. It's a long movie. We were talking about that, too. Hour 54, it's longer than what you would... Yeah. Maybe think. So they fit a lot of different 
moments into this flick, uh, where the Russians are tracking them and they don't know how, and they are able oh, to man, come about that. to the conclusion that what did they? I, d I didn't quite understand the setup. Okay, so so like they forced him to so, swallow a tracker. Yep. Was he like caught? Was yep. he so so uh, the mayor is his dad, Daryl, the curly headed fuck. Okay. His dad's the mayor, and he said that he went back to town. He was trying to sneak in to see his dad, see how things were going, and he got caught. And so. I imagine like they were gonna kill him or stuff, but since it was the mayor's son, they were like, "Oh, you can lead us back to these wolverines." They forced him to swallow it, and then he said that they made or did other stuff. So I assume maybe they tortured him or did something, and then sent him back. And gotcha. so, yeah, and then the beep 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 beep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that oh man, that that it was difficult. What did you think when they? Yeah. Like Patrick Swayze couldn't do it. He couldn't shoot him even though he was a traitor. I forgot about that. I remember Patrick Stacey not shooting him. Mm -hmm. And that's what I remember. I was like, oh yeah, I think I think they just sent him away. And then C. Thomas yeah. Howell just... Like, like, I, I can do it. Holy shit. You see his blood all over the Yeah. And... I don't know. That was... <laughs> it's difficult, man, because you think, what would you do in that situation? Yeah. Do you send him... That would be really tough. I mean... That's... I don't that know. That was a really. I don't know what you do. This that's movie. That's a crazy scene. This movie asks a lot of questions where the answer is I don't know. There's a lot of like Lord of the Flies in this. Yeah. I mean, it's it's only eight kids. I think. I think there's it's three a small guys, number. six guys, two girls. <sighs> yeah, I mean, but it's very much. There's a lot of Lord of the Flies and and kids becoming the government and how they would run things and mm -hmm. and how they decide what to do with with a a traitor. And man, that's I can't remember how they handle that in the in the remake, but I can't imagine that they do the same thing. Not now. I wouldn't think so. Two thousand twelve? I can't imagine them doing the, the same kind of scene. Mm. I do wanna I, I wanna see I just wanna see what they did to it. That's I'm bastardized just, yeah. it. Yeah, it's it's the uh it was, like I said, it wasn't just like they remade it for a new generation. They just made a bad movie. So it, uh, I feel like it's got the worst it, of So both. it fell into the same problems as a lot of remakes where it was just not a good movie and not that happened to movie. have the name Red Dawn attached to yeah. it. Because Red Dawn, yeah. because someone figured out, well, and, Red Dawn is going to sell X amount of tickets, and so... And it just doesn't make sense with uh, Koreans. Because, I mean, Red Dawn, Red and communism and, and all that kind of stuff. And, I suppose they're and, thinking, like, North Korea. Yeah, I, I, yeah but Which I, I don't know. It just... If... It, it it pissed me off a lot. And I was... I don't know. I don't want to get into it. Yeah. It'll just piss me off. <clears throat> um, the one thing I will say, though, is with the remake, the pilot is um, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Oh, cool. Fantastic casting. If I I remember he like he pretty much carried what part of the movie he was in. Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Good. I mean that's like perfect casting. Film Powers Booth role. Um, Powers Booth was great. Powers Booth. Fantastic. His chunk of the film. It's great. I mean I don't want to say the best part of the film, but no. it's. It's good. It's a, He's great. It's an enjoyable part of it, for sure. Oh, yeah. I, I like when, um, like, there's that stupid, what's well, the capital of Texas, and he says it right, and she's, I don't know why, I guess it was some kind of inside joke about her being wrong or something, but um, I like when uh, <laughs> they take him back, and, and Swayze comes up, and he's like, oh, you must be the honcho of this group. He's like, who are you? And he's like, I'm so-and-so, Air Force. How'd you get yourself shot down? It was five to one. I got four. <laughs> <laughs> he just says it so nonchalantly and cocky. Like, I got four. Yeah. What do you want from me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I really enjoy him in this movie. And I wish... I mean... Holy shit. I didn't... Re Almost everybody dies. There's yeah. only two survivors. I didn't remember that at all. Mm -hmm. And that just adds to the... The... 
stakes and the circumstances surrounding how terrible like, how yeah war and conflict yeah it's not would a, be. it's not a happy ending yeah um, you don't <sighs> add the line I wanted to get to uh, I think it was Powers Booth who said the first part of it he was like all that hate is gonna burn you up because the right, kid is carving yeah. and he's like see Thomas Howell yeah and he's like it keeps me warm yeah. He fucking did a 360 after he found out his dad was killed. Mm -hmm. I mean, it'd be, a lot of these, you know, all of the characters said, but especially you know, he was crying and, and sobbing and he didn't want anything to do with it in the beginning. And, and after his dad is killed, he something switches and he's he's cold blooded. Mm -hmm. uh, he goes out like a fucking badass. <laughs> a badass. Like, holy shit. That's amazing. I like, um,. Yeah, it's the helicopters, mm -hmm. and he's just shooting at them. He runs out of the RPGs, and so he's just shooting at them. Yeah. He's like, "Fuck it!" Like, I knew I that know, was a it's... trap. I knew when that scene happened. I'm like, "That has to be a trap." <sighs> yeah. When they dump the food behind and they. Yeah, and I thought it was clever. It was smart. And I'm like, "Don't do it." I, I didn't. I didn't like the way they. Why would you stand next to the road? Right. Grab Why that shit and go. Grab that shit and fucking go. Like, I understand that they're supposed to be hungry. They haven't had fresh anything in a long time. And right. so they're just supposed to be, what, like, overwhelmed at yeah. that point with, like, oranges and donuts and shit that we <laughs> haven't had. And they just can't help themselves. But, right. man, get the, you got two boxes. Well, and even, um... Get that shit and fucking go. You got horses. Yeah, they start putting it in bags. It's like, just grab the box. Yeah. Uh, why, would you, like, why would you dick around on that cliff? So, like, you know that they're using this road. Why would you dick around? Yeah. Fucking, you get that shit, you get in your horses, and you go. You bolt. You get out of there. It was interesting. Um, they're sitting up on the rock and stuff, and he's asking Jed, do you want to go for it? You know, we haven't eaten for a while. And there's a long pause, and you can tell he's, like, thinking about he's it. thinking. Like, is this a trap? You know, I'm pretty fucking hungry, though. Yeah. And ultimately, like, and the way that this character is portrayed, I feel like by the end of the movie, like, I feel like Jed hell, holds a lot of guilt, like, after that, especially for making the decision, making the call, especially as the leader. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you end up losing two people there. And then, yeah, it's uh, kind of the beginning of the end. Yeah, it is. Or, or their little group of survivors as well. Um, what do you think of the ending? The ending with the two... With the brothers, and then uh, okay, the general so, not shooting them. and uh, That was unexpected, but I liked the fact that it showed... It tried to per show both sides as having a human element to it. Mm -hmm. Like, it wasn't just generic bad guy Russians invading the country. Right. Like, they showed that there are people on both sides... Who don't want to fucking be here? <laughs> like that was kind of a constant throughout the film. Some, especially some of the younger Russians. Yeah. Uh, the early on scene where the one was in the car, Patrick Swayze shot the kid in the car. Yeah. Uh, he's just a kid. He didn't want to be there either. None of them really want to be there. Especially uh, the uh, Colonel Bella. It's yeah. so cold here. I can't remember the last time I was warm. Yeah. <laughs> and he's writing in his journal. So I liked that. I thought that that was a good story beat. That was an interesting path for them to take. Uh, the slow-moving train, the world's well, slowest-moving okay, yeah. train through the town. Yeah. What, did, what did you know, fucking they coasted that train? What the fuck was going yeah, on I, with that? <laughs> I don't know about that. That was a little hokey, like... Yeah, I don't know. Um... The ending with, with uh, I mean, Jed ends up killing him and um, Maddie's dead and stuff. And he's like trying to care, he's carrying his brother first. Mm -hmm. And he walks past Colonel Bella and he doesn't shoot him and stuff. And I did like the way he just motions, like he puts his gun down and he just yeah. motions, like just, just like, fucking. Like, you guys look like you're gonna die. You're, you're both gonna die anyway, just fucking just yeah, go. Go be in peace. Yeah. And, um, but god damn. He looks, down after, at his, he looks down at his hands, yeah. puts him on the rail and shit. Like, that's a good moment. Um, after that, when Swayze's carrying him and he just falls, and they both fall like a sack of shit. Swayze's getting up, though, and he's, like, trying to pick Maddie up to sit with him, and he's just, you know, he, he's gone. And it's just so heavy and tough, and he's crying and talking about we're gonna go see Dad, and 
Holy shit, it's just powerful uh -huh. stuff, and it's, uh, it, it makes me think of, like, <laughs> I, I, my mind jumps around with this, but in, like, Lion King, when uh, Simba's, like, trying to wake up Mufasa after he falls. Oh, God, you make like, me cry. Dad, Don't do this. Dad. And it's, like, when, when Jed's trying to pick up Maddie, he's like, come on, Maddie, we're gonna go see Dad. Mm -hmm. It's like, fuck, my, my heart strings. I don't know, it's, it's, this movie is, I mean, it tugs hard at your heartstrings, mm -hmm. and it's just, it plays a little tune with it. It's, it's strong stuff. Yeah. I like the very, very end shot of the film of the monument that was, like, dedicated uh, yeah. to, I thought, and that's a little voiceover where it's like, and in time, all conflicts come to an end. And yeah. This rock is dedicated to the people who were largely children who helped fight and win this battle, these battles in here. And What'd you think of when uh, Jed carved him and Matt's names on the rock before they went? Did you think that that was just kind of like, yeah, we were here, or did you think that they knew that they were going to die? I think they knew. Yeah. I, th I think they knew. They knew that most of their group was gone at that point, and that, like, this was... You're, you're, there are no survivors, really, like, other than, you know, they were able to send a couple people out, but for the most part, it's mm -hmm. like, you don't survive right. in situations like that. And they had done all that they could do, and it was like, they he recognized that it was their time. Yeah. Though part of me, there was a little bit of a dialogue earlier on in the film where they were like, yeah, and you're word is spreading and their people want to join the yeah. Wolverines and yeah, in springtime really cool. we're gonna there there's talks of them sending in special forces. I kind of hoped that it would have got to that point yeah. in the film. Because you know the way it was progressing through the months is that mm -hmm. I thought that oh it's gonna continue on in uh, February, yeah. March and April and you'll get to see them joined up with that would have been kind of cool. But that would have been fucking neat. I I, I like the way the movie ended. It ended on a powerful note. I and I kind of wanted a little more of that though. But like you said though, um, yeah, we're talking about they're talking about bringing people in in spring, and Chad's like, spring's a long time away. But we're yeah. living day to day out here. Yeah, totally. Like, it's fast enough, not fast enough. Yeah, um, it's shit like that that's missing from Walking Dead. I know that's a weird yes. that's a weird comparison to make, but you can kind of relate it. Yeah, it's the stories of just people trying to survive. Yeah, that's it's like why does that show? Why can't it figure this out? Why do in two hours Red Dawn pull, <laughs> pull more heartstrings than seven seasons of Walking Dead? Yeah, I feel more upset about Red Dawn than I do Walking Dead. I haven't watched Walking Dead. <laughs> um, well, I mean the, the seasons that I did watch. I haven't watched the last one, but. I didn't watch the last one. I haven't watched any of I'm more upset one. about uh, Jed and Maddie dying on a bench together than I am Glenn. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I, yeah, I, got, I was just not. In two hours, I was more invested in Jed and Matt than seven seasons of Glenn. Mm -hmm. Or whatever, six seasons. Um, yeah, I don't know. This, this film does a, a perfect job. And it still, if you're just watching it for the action... If you're one of those people, there's plenty oh, of yeah. action. It holds up on that, too. Um, and if you're, you know... It reminds me it for... of a movie that my dad would really like. He's probably seen it. Well, yeah. But just because it's it's got enough Western elements to it. Oh, yeah. And my dad's a big fan of, of Westerns and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, I think that if you like that style of filmmaking, you'll you'll dig this. Oh, for sure. Um, we'll, uh, do you have any... Um... Do some final thoughts, then we'll do trivia and anything, all that stuff. Do you have anything else you want to add before? Star we... Wars hat. Be... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that was One of the characters cool. is wearing a Star Wars hat. Um. Just wanted. To yeah. Point... See Thomas. I Howell. just wanted to point that yeah. out. And did you notice? I mean, I know they took like a bunch of supplies from the shop and everything, but like Matt and uh, C. Thomas Howell are wearing like they have the same jacket. I did notice and that. Then, yeah, I thought oh, that, that was kind of cool how they, they took stuff from the shop and it, like, yeah, of course it's the same jacket and because it's... the sleeping bags and stuff. Yeah, I thought that yeah. was really cool. Just, just those little details and they progressively get dirtier and dirtier and dirtier. It and... was neat the way they didn't change clothing. Yeah. Like, 
their coats were their coats. Matt still always had his Letterman jacket on underneath. The girl with the blue jacket really stood out mm -hmm. because she was the one that was setting all the traps, and you could just feel the tension on, like, the Russian side of it, of, like, that fucking girl with that blue jacket. <laughs> Did she got us again? Why can't we yeah. fucking their kids? Why can't we get them? Yep. All right. Well, uh, we'll go into some final thoughts, and okay. then we'll do um, trivia, Rotten Tomatoes, all that other Sweet. stuff. So, um, you want to go first? Final thoughts? I'm glad I watched it. It was one that I have, uh, like I said, it was on my list of an older movie that I, I feel like I need to watch. If I'm a movie fan, I need to see Red Dawn. Uh, I think anyone out there who hasn't seen it, you should, you should check it out. You can get it for dirt cheap uh, on Blu-ray at this point. So, uh, do it. Watch the film. Enjoy it. What do you think, Jeff? It's, um... I always say every film is one of my favorite films, but Red Dawn is top. It's got to be top ten for just general overall films that wow. I can rewatch, rewatch over and over and over and over and over. Um, I I was introduced to it at a young age, and I've just watched it over and over and over and over and over. Yeah. And um, you know everything we said from the cast to. Uh, the story, the emotional elements, everything. Everything mm -hmm. in this movie is right. I mean, I can't think of a thing that they did wrong. You nitpick you nit any film. But, I mean, there's nothing that really stands out in this movie. It's like, oh, I don't... I, I, why'd they do... I, I, there's I never a point in this movie where I'm like, oh, they shouldn't have done that. Yeah, why, ooh, why would they do that? Why would they or, do that? Or, right? oh, why'd that character... I mean, we yeah. nitpicked a little bit about the scene on the road... But you can also I justify yeah, it at, exactly. the, at the same time. So, there are kids who are hungry. They're fucking hungry. They yeah. haven't had anything for. Um, I and I would also just say. No. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. I uh, I don't think you should just drink deer blood. Okay. That was um. my, <laughs> that was my scene where I was like, that's probably not good for you. That's part of it. I mean. I thought that was a really cool element of this, and then if I remember correctly, in the remake, I mean that's a very that's a, a serious story beat. Yeah, that's it is his first kill and drinking the blood, and now now you're changed, you're gonna be different. In the remake, I'm pretty sure it's a joke. They they convince him like, oh yeah, you have to drink the blood and blah blah blah, and then he drinks it. They're like, oh my god, I can't believe you did that. Oh, you're so gross. Pissed me I don't like that. off. I don't like it, Jeff. I like the scene. I just thought it was funny. Uh, and I mean, not funny, but it's right, like, right. oh, you, you're going to drink deer blood now. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think I'm wrong, but you're I'm probably, pretty, I'm pretty sure in the remake that it, it's like a joke and it pissed me off. It's like, no, that's a serious moment. It's like with the last 5% of the battery on their phone, they're like, let me record you oh doing that. <laughs> So stupid. Um, but uh, so, uh, I was gonna say, I always, 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 always got Leah Thompson and Jennifer Grey mixed up, and it's not. I mean, in the f movie, like obviously you can tell the difference. But mm -hmm. if you ask me who is in uh, Dirty Dancing, oh Leah Thompson, no, no, Jennifer Grey. Mm. Oh, who was uh, who was Ferris Bueller's sister? Je or uh, uh, oh, Jennifer Grey. Who's in Back to the Future. Back to the Future. Uh, Leah, Leah Thompson. Thompson. <laughs> I, I, I always get those two mixed up. Yeah. And they're, you know, about the same age. They're in the same kind of string of movie kind of deals. and 80s actresses. Um, but holy shit, like, if I was, you know, alive, like, they definitely would have been my crush, for sure. Um... So I, I just, I wrote that down. I'm like, I've always had a crush on them. Yeah. Leah Thompson and Jennifer Grey, and I always get them mixed up. Marty had a pretty hot mom in Back to the Future. Yes. I, <laughs> I always get them mixed up, and I just, it's weird that they're both in this film together. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay, that's that one, that's that one. Which is which? <laughs> Wasn't I reading that, not Leah Thompson, but the other one? Je Jennifer Grey. Didn't she not want to do... Uh, dirty dancing at first. Oh, really? Because of her experience of working with Patrick Swayze in Red Dawn. Oh, really? Yeah, I read that online before Maybe. we started recording this. And because then I saw I, something... I guess he had to, like, sit down and have a, like, a conversation, like, convince her, like, no, it was, like, whatever happened, and be like, no, it was fine, and... 
convince I, her to come on to the film. I think there was something in the trivia that, like, um, the director would pass notes through Swayze to the actors, so that kind of got everybody on on edge. Hmm. Um, so I wonder if that had something to do with it. That's funny. I don't know. Maybe. Um, do some trivia? Yeah, do some trivia. All right, I wrote it down again. Getting better. Um, during the shoot, there were CIA agents that came to the set after reports of a Russian tank. Oh. Because no internet and none of that shit, mm -hmm. so they just... But they were relieved when they found out that it was just a movie. Yeah. As I would be, too. That happened on the set of Scream when they were recording, because uh, they used actual cordless phones to record the dialogue of the actor who did, like, the scary voice over the phone, yeah. talking to, like, Drew Barrymore or whatever. Right. And uh, that was back, you know, on cordless phones where you could turn a police scanner. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, like, a local police scanner could pick up the frequency. Okay. And so someone overheard on, a, like, an actual, like, a neighbor or whatever, like, overheard that and called the cops, and the cops showed up on set because they thought someone was getting murdered. <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah. That's possible. So, yeah, yeah, that shit happens. Um, this is Charlie Sheen's film debut. Really? Yep, first film. How much cocaine do you think he did? None. On set? Not yet. Not yet? Not yet. We weren't at that point with Charlie till, Sheen. Not till I like Charlie Sheen quite a bit. Yeah. I like a lot of... Have you seen uh, Navy Seals? Yeah, I have. Yeah? Yeah. I like that. He's great in that. Him and Michael Bain and uh, Bill Paxton and... He's the best part of Scary Movie 3. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that movie, but I love Charlie Sheen in that movie. It's so good. Oh my god. Someone on the internet back me up on that. He's good in that movie. Um, and then this was the first movie released with a PG-13 rating. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what I was just doing there. Um, I can, uh, I can, I can, I can tell you where you were going. Um, there used to not be... A, it was tough because there was no distinction between... There was no middle ground between PG and R. Right, right, right. And so it was difficult to... What to cut what rating to put on a movie. That's why you go back and you look at the old PG rating before PG-13. You can find, like, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre is rated PG. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, at least I think so, anyway. Someone in the comments is going to be like, fuck you, no, it's not. <laughs> I really think that it has a PG rating, or, like, Poltergeist has a PG rating. Probably. Because there was no distinction. Or it just was not rated because of yeah. early, early or, rating early on, board. Whatever. Uh, yeah. I uh, talked about this earlier. There was no computer graphics whatsoever. What you see is what you see. All of it was uh, achieved practically. Uh, the napalm, they used uh, a long tube with like gasoline and other stuff, and they, and they made uh, like explosion points. So when they set it off, it went off in a chain. That like was napalm. pretty convincing, too. Yeah, it looked good. And then we have an originally cast kind of deal. Originally. Lady Jones. No, <laughs> um, Emilio Estevez as okay. Patrick Swayze's role. So okay, him, and, uh, up really quick. him and Sheen could have been brothers on screen as well as in real life. I think uh, Estevez would have done fine as Swayze's role. I prefer Swayze, but I think Estevez could have been Jed. Yeah. And it would have been cool with him and, and Charlie Sheen together. Um, have you seen Young Guns? I've never seen Young Guns. Young Guns. Uh, Emilio Estevez plays Billy the Kid, and then the regulators are like Charlie Sheen. Okay. So they're in together with on that, and then like Kiefer Sutherland. Ooh. Um, Blue Diamond Phillips, Dermot, Dermot Maroney, Casey Sezamesco, and uh, who's the old guy? Uh, who's who's the uh, that old mob boss in Batman that dies right away? The fuck is this? We almost went a whole podcast without mentioning Batman. Oh. <laughs> um, I don't remember the actor's name. Uh, you can look that up really quick. I googled uh, briefly. I was totally wrong, Jeff. Texas Chainsaw has an R rating. Okay. I don't know why I thought it had PG. Maybe someone can elaborate on where I got that from. Maybe back in the day it had PG and they've retconned it. And do an R rating, I don't 100% know. But I know that there was... A lot of the old movies have some bizarre ratings compared to what what we have now. Jack Palance. Let me see a photo of him. Oh. Can you just close out of it? Yeah. Yeah. 
Jack Palance is the bad guy in Young Guns. Jack Palance. Gotcha. Oh, okay, the one that the Joker shoots up. <laughs> yep. Jack Nicholson. Yeah, Young Guns is cool. I like Young Guns. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the cast is fantastic. Yeah, I love uh, Batman 89. <laughs> um, also then, has a good cast. Yeah, Cam yeah. Basinger's hot. Yeah, Basinger, Bassinger, Basinger, Basinger. I don't know how to say your last name. I always say Basinger, but I always feel like I'm saying it wrong. That's probably the Midwest way we pronounce it. Basinger, B Bassinger, Bassinger, Bassinger. I don't know. Um, and then uh, Outsiders. Uh, it's, uh, Patrick Swayze, C. Thomas Howell, and Darren Dalton. Darren Dalton, who played da Darren Dalton, played Daryl. Darren Dalton played Daryl. Darren Dalton Darryl. played Daryl <laughs> Dixon. Um, <laughs> he was Daryl in Red Dawn, and in Outsiders, he was the Soch that uh, uh, Karate Kid stabs in the beginning. Oh, okay. Or C yeah, yeah, Karate Kid. Ra uh, Ralph Macchio. And then the original title for this movie, which I'm glad they didn't go with, Teen Soldiers. Oh, that's that sounds terrible. Horrible. That's, uh, that's, I would not watch a movie called Teen Soldiers. No. I probably would, but that's beside the point. Red Dawn's I, much better. Red Dawn. Although I kept wanting to write The Hunt for Red October. I don't know why, because I'm an idiot. That's yeah, why. they both have red in them. They have red. So that's, that's some trivia for you. Um, should we do Rotten Tomatoes? Let's. I didn't write it down. <laughs> or no, I might have it actually in here. I can pull it up really quick list. if you want me to. Oh, got it. Oh. Maybe. We want to start with audience Where are we at? score. Let's All start right. with audience score. All right, audience score. That is the important score in my opinion. We'll care what critics think. We want to know what you guys think. I am going to say... 78. It's a little bit lower. It's at, set, or no, it's at uh, 65. And that's because people like my dad don't rate movies on, <laughs> exactly. on that's fucking thing. Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, There's like a whole uh, generation of people that are fucking just don't give a shit. Don't have any clue what a Rotten Tomato is other than right. the shit in your garden. Rotten Tomatoes is very much the new generation. Millennial. So. Uh, what did the critics think, Jeff? 50, 50-50. It, it, this is a little bit higher than we normally do, but yeah. fucking, I wanted to talk some Red Dawn. And I didn't like audience it. audience score is higher than critic score, so that's a main Fits thing. the bill. It's a main thing. And um, do some plugaroonies, I think. Are we going to... Let, let's plug how people can win this thing first. Alright, so... I've been saying um, I was going to start plugging the website first, so I'm going to plug the website first. The website is PantheonNetwork.com. You can find every single fucking thing on there. Yeah. So just go to Pantheon Network. You can find all our audio. You can find the videos. You can donate to our Patreon on there. We have a store on there with some merchandise. Shirts are 14 bucks. That's it. Pretty cool. A lot of, you know, a lot You get a t-shirt. I want a t-shirt for this summer. Me too. I need yeah. one. I still need one. <laughs> um, but, you know, a lot of places try to charge 20, 25 bucks for a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. I just, I want you to be able to get a shirt for 14 bucks. So, you can find merchandise on the website, Patreon. You can find our Facebook and our Twitter on there. Uh, like I said, the audio and the videos. You can find Comedy Bowl Podcast on there. They're our partners. Um, they're, you know, some silly bastards. Good stuff. On talk, there. um, they do a lot of jokes and, and funny stories and stuff like that. Um, what else is on there? I mean, there's a bunch of stuff on there. Just, stuff. There's just some articles. You've got some writing. I've got yeah. some writing. We'll add to it. Yeah, just, uh, so pantheonnetwork.com. Just go there. It's all there. Every single thing. Mm -hmm. Every single thing. Um, do you have anything? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter, at InhumanWitch. Uh, that has all of my stuff. Um, that's I funnel it all into my Twitter account. So you can see, yeah. my, you can see my photography work. You can see my writing. Uh, really, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> photography and writing. Uh, but yeah, you can you can check me out there. And that's a great way to see. Uh, and one more thing. I Like I said last week, 
Um, I got a new writing job. I write for BlastingNews.com. Mm, yes. And so it would mean a lot to me. I uh, I will. I have my my writing page. Yeah, Facebook page. Um, I have a link to that on the Shut Up I Like This page. Uh, and it would mean a lot if you could, uh, you know, do a like and a follow or uh, share it. Um, I do a lot of game-related news. If you're into video games, I do a lot of, uh, like, developer interviews. Um, just kind of shine some light on some independent games. Uh, talk to a lot of cool people. And, um, yeah, I've just been having a blast with it. So if that's something that interests you, uh, head over there and check me out. And um, thank you guys for listening or watching now. This is our second video in HD, so if you are, uh, if you guys are listening, head over to YouTube, check it out. We look pretty good. Subscribe not good and comment. And you can, uh, if if you're not, if you're just listening and you're watching, or you're, <laughs> if you're just listening right now and you're not watching, I'll give you a reason to watch. You can come on here and make fun of my man bun. That should be enough reason. You can come watch us make fun of me. It's cool as long as you're watching. I don't care. Yeah. Talk about Red Dawn. Um, so thank you guys. Uh, numbers are, are going up. You guys are sharing. You guys are, are posting a lot. And uh, we appreciate it. Love hearing from you. And uh, see you next week. What should we do next week? I got a list right Ooh, here. Oh, pull out the list. Let's see. I don't know. I'm kind of feeling... We've done two war movies in a row. Yeah. I gotta mix it up. I'm kind of feeling... Can't do a war film. Should we do... I think we should do Stay Alive. Okay. Stay Alive is a, uh, the film where they play the horror survival game, and if you die in the game, you die in real life. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a 9% on Rotten Tomatoes, so that's Ooh, boy. perfect for us. Stay Alive. Frankie Muniz, John Foster, uh, I can't... A couple other guys on there. So, um... Next week, stay alive. And, um... Hopefully we can stay alive uh, for sure. another week uh, to talk about this film. I'm sure I'll be fine. I'm contagious. I don't know what's going on with you. I'm super contagious. Uh, um, Alright, sounds good. I can't <laughs> wait. Uh, thank you guys for listening again. And, uh, from me, Jeff, and Kyle. Hey-o. Um, have a nice day, and love you. <laughs>